Cranial nerve one is a special sensory nerve. It presents with anosmia. A lot of patients actually do not notice that they cannot smell unless they have a profession like a cook um, that they notice that th their smell is degraded. What we have is we have the olfactory bulb right above the cribriform plate, and then we have small fibers going through the cribriform plate into the superior nasal cavity. From the posterior aspect of the olfactory bulb, there are two tracts, the lateral olfactory tracts and the medial olfactory tracts. Both eventually end up in the olfactory projection area, which is in the ancus. The ancus is then relaying information to the hippocampus, which so serves as the olfactory memory. On imaging, uh, when we look at the olfactory bulb, we would like to do coronal T2-weighted images. This is the best you can always see them. And they are typically ovoid in shape. They, the shape changes a little bit depending on how your intracranial fossa is developed. Sometimes you will have a shallow um, fovea ethmoidalis and the olfactory groove, or sometimes it will be more steep, and because of that, it might be more horizontal or more vertical in orientation. So let us look at some pathology. This is a child that came for evaluation of development delay, and the first thing that you see is a large arachnoid cyst that is displacing the brain parenchyma. But when you're looking carefully, you also notice that there are no olfactory bulbs on both sides. In the anterior portion, in the posterior portion, you have a small rudimentary bulb on the left side, nothing on the right side. When you look at the sagittal images, you also identify that the pituitary gland is really small, and the con constellation of findings of the, optic, uh, of, the, of the olfactory bulb, a genesis with very small pituitary gland is consistent with Kalman syndrome. Many times we see a non-existent or very small olfactory bulb on one or both sides. And many times we don't have any uh, additional associated abnormalities with it. And this is, could be congenital in nature. However, often it will be also related to infection causing atrophy of the olfactory bulb. Often it is, is a viral infection such as um, a simple cold that is translated to the olfactory bulb itself and causes problems with smell sensation afterwards. However, when you see encephalomalacia associated with it in the infrafrontal lobes where you see barely any bulbs, this is typically post-traumatic in nature, which is one of the most common etiologies for anosmia uh, in our adult patient population. Here we have a patient who has a large mass filling up the entire nasal cavity. This mass alone, because it prevents the smell going to the roof of the nasal cavity, could prevent uh, uh, that we are smelling correctly. However, what you notice also in, uh, on the MRI is that there is intracranial extension and that the olfactory bulb is actually affected. We have the normal olfactory bulb on the left side. We cannot identify it on the right side. This lesion shows marked enhancement following contrast administration. This is a nonspecific finding. This could be certainly a squamous cell carcinoma arising in the nasal cavity or ethmoid air cells. However, when you see the characteristic cystic structure superiorly towards the brain parenchyma, as demonstrated in this particular patient, your diagnosis of STZ neuroplastoma would be the most appropriate because squamous cell carcinoma does not have the tendency to have those um, cysts towards the intracranial structures. So what are the key points for cranial nerve one? Coronal T2 weighted images are your money maker. So here you can best determine the size of the olfactory bulbs or if there is involvement of the cranial nerve one as demonstrated in the last few cases where you have a big nasal cavity mass with involvement intracranially. You often see atrophy which can be due to prior infection or to post-traumatic <clears throat> disorders. And last but not least, occasionally you will see Estes neuroblastoma as the most common primary neoplasm of the olfactory bulb. In those cases, you characteristically see the cysts along the intracranial edge.